Hi, and welcome to A Sunny Book Nook. Today I wanted to give you some Disability Pride Month book recommendations because July is Disability Pride Month, and I've read a few books that prominently feature disabled main characters or deal with the theme of disability and how that affects people's day-to-day -day lives and um, the entire plot of the story. So let's just get into my list. The first book I want to talk about is A Spindle Splintered by Alix E. Harrow. This book is a Sleeping Beauty retelling and we are following a young woman who has a fictional illness called what is it called? Generalized Roseville Malady. It's a terminal chronic illness, eating the proteins or whatever inside her cells, and our main character is a European folklore slash like fairy tale student expert. That's what she went to school to study, and she's always had a very particular fascination with Sleeping Beauty, and so for her 21st birthday, her best friend throws her this bash and then she gets sucked into a multiverse of Sleeping Beauty stories in which she has to save these various girls from pricking their fingers on the spindle and stuff like that. It is a fun fantasy quirky multiverse story that follows a main character who has to receive regular treatments for GRM. This series, especially in the second book, really deals with the way that she thinks of and confronts her illness and how she uses it or navigates being chronically ill and terminally ill and how she views herself and how she interacts with the world, especially with these other princesses and other people in similar situations as her, like how she uses her life essentially. And I really think that this book is written in a way that is kind of like Gen Z Twitter humor-ish-esque, but it's pretty short and it's a fun read to get through. The second book I think is Mirror Mended and I read that one recently as well and I liked it. I will continue with this series. I think it's fun, it's fresh, it's a take on fairy tale retellings that has a twist of humor as well as obviously dealing with the various sociopolitical implications of being a queer, chronically, terminally ill, disabled woman who is able to travel across the multiverse. And she has a close female friendship with her best friend who is also queer and it's just a fun romp i would say but of course deals with these really pressing issues that impact the way that our main character navigates the this multiverse situation then i want to talk about a book that i've mentioned a lot uh, quite recently and that is just by looking at him by ryan o'connell this book is, again, very humorous, but it's a contemporary realistic fiction following a man with cerebral palsy. He is a mid-30s gay man TV writer in LA, and he's in a long-term committed relationship that he eventually, that throughout the course of the book, he starts cheating on his boyfriend by sleeping with these sex workers because he's attempting to reclaim his sexuality from the narratives of disability and sex that he's sort of been inundated with his whole life, as well as the fact that he feels like even though his boyfriend takes care of him and his needs, he knows that his body is not desirable in the way that his boyfriend like wants, I guess. Not that he would ever vocalize it, and it's also like him talking about how the actual physical mechanisms of having to walk around or even with in the midst of having sex like the pain of that that others aren't aware of that his sexual partners um aren't aware of and also the way that he doesn't want them to be he doesn't really want to be seen as disabled because he doesn't want to be treated as disabled and it's about him dealing with that internalized stuff and working through it as well as the chaotic mess of his relationship and the alcoholism that he and his boyfriend sort of enable each other for so i definitely think this book is a really 
interesting, funny, critical examination of gay men culture and like ableist culture. This book is also uh, a great read for Disability Pride Month and if you're looking for disability representation, specifically that is a gay man and who who has cerebral palsy. Then I want to talk about So Lucky by Nicola Griffith, which is another book that I've talked about quite a lot recently on this channel if you've been keeping up. This is an autobiography that follows our main character who gets diagnosed with MS, which I think is basically your nerves and your brain are like breaking down essentially. And so it really affects our main character's like motor capabilities and she is a lesbian who's working in the nonprofit sector for people with HIV AIDS but she eventually loses that job and she also has recently gotten out of a long-term relationship and it's about her trying to navigate this new world of online disability activism that she gets thrust into as the anger within her bubbles up over the way that she is mistreated and the way that the world is not fit or built for handicapped people and people who need wheelchairs or people who are more likely to be at the mercy of people who commit hate crimes or robberies against disabled people and a vulnerable, like a physically vulnerable community. Throughout this book we kind of see her build this new community and like nonprofit organizations surrounding people who are chronically ill and disabled and also of course her online forums and she sees these horrific headlines of basically these like serial killers going around and torturing disabled people and breaking into their homes and it obviously really concerns her but she also has this like metaphysical haunting from this support group meeting that she went to that to other people seems like a figment of her imagination but to her feels viscerally real and like a, a really major threat and an ominous force in her life and I think that this book deals with the process of becoming disabled and then the aftermath of that and then living with it and getting involved in activist spaces out of almost a necessity and as an outlet for rage and yeah, I think this was a great biography, autobiography and memoir that feels almost like a fictional novel in the way that it's written and the way that the plot progresses and how well structured it is and how pacey it is. So I would highly recommend this. The next book I want to talk about is a sapphic thriller heist story kind of called The Girls I've Been. And in this book, our main character is this girl who's recently gotten into a relationship with this other girl, and it's a friend group of three people, right? So our main character got into a relationship with this other girl, but she had previously been dating this boy, but these three are best friends, but the boy doesn't know that these two are dating, and they had dated previously. It's, it's a whole situation, but basically, our main character has been raised by a very abusive and manipulative con artist mother and now it's sort of crashing down around her because she has um she's had many fake identities over her life which is why the book is called the girls i've been and her girlfriend her secret girlfriend has a disability and chronic illness that prevents her from being able to do like long physical activity for for periods of time and they end up getting stuck in this bank robbery situation and they're dropping off money from a donation thing that they were doing for their school and once once they're there these armed robbers come in and they have to try to survive and get out our main character's aunt is whom she lives with is a cop and so there's that whole situation involved i think like that side character of her girlfriend being disabled is another very crucial plot point to the book because obviously it limits and also complicates the way that these three teenagers are trying to navigate being in a hostage situation because like the boy he can try to climb through the vents and whatever but 
obviously she can't escape that way um and the book sort of alternates chapters between our main character's childhood and then the different sort of persona she's had to take on for her mom to do her cons and then with like the moment of being at the scene of the crime and so i think that this disability representation is a bit more subtle because it's with the side character but is really integral to the nature of the story i would say and also like our main character's mom is obviously like deeply mentally ill in like a life-changing and crippling way because she obviously has abused and manipulated her daughter her whole life that's how she earns a living of being a con artist and a scammer so yeah i think the way that the mental health and the illnesses of the people around our main character her whole life is really integral to the plot of the story for sure. Then I want to talk about a historical romance novel called Two Rogues Make a Right by Kat Sebastian, I believe. And this book follows two childhood-ish best friends and one of them has been chronically ill his whole life and he is like holed up in some attic somewhere in London and his best friend is trying to help him despite the fact that the man with the disability like doesn't want to be seen as a burden but obviously the other man doesn't see him as a burden he sees him as his best friend and also like the love of his life. It's about the way they have to navigate their relationship and their budding feelings for each other and their attraction with the fact that our one main character is like very very ill and needs to be taken care of and our other main character is a recovering addict and he also goes through periods of deep deep depression and so it's about these two chronically ill people who are you know falling in love together in this sort of historical european regency-esque like setting our chronically ill main character sort of views himself as like a lost cause and so his best friend sort of like kidnaps him and takes him to the countryside to get like better air and to take better care of him it's a really sweet romance and it's also the third book in a romance series and i love the whole series seducing the sedgwick series great i love it i love it so much and the way that these three it's like following these different siblings and their romantic relationships and pursuits I guess and it's it's really fun it's really great but this story is very heartbreaking and also beautiful in the way that these two people are taking care of each other and the ways that they feel like they have to navigate feeling like a burden for someone that they love because of their disabilities so I would definitely recommend this if you're into historical romances and uh, yeah, I, I love this book. The next book I want to talk about is All's Well by Mona Awad. This is one of my favorite books of, I think, last year. Is that when I read it? It's so, so good. Oh my gosh. So it follows an English professor main character. She's an English professor because she used to be a theater actor performer, and she became disabled when she fell off the stage. Something happened to her spine. She's constantly in pain and she has this big cardigan that she wears. She has her prescription pill bottles and painkillers in her pockets that are always rattling around as she's walking. And she's really trying to put on a Shakespeare production with the school's tiny theater budget and department. Everyone wants to do Hamlet, all of her students do, because it's like more dramatic. But she's like, no, we need to do All's Well That Ends Well. And our main character is like, of course trying to navigate this like chronic pain and the fact that everyone in her life she feels is not close to her or can't really help her or she can't ask for help because she doesn't want people's pity but they also don't know the true extent of the reality that she lives and her disability just view her as constantly overreacting and she's very afraid of being seen as someone who's just over dramatic and you know she's has all these anxieties about how everyone thinks that she is just faking it when in reality she's in so much indescribable pain all the time but eventually we kind of see her throughout the course of the novel her interactions with these magical three men that she runs into at the bar and how that changes the course of her life but i don't think it's one of those things that's like boom wow magically healed 
from disability, everything is fine. Like, she gets gaslit and abused by medical professionals and people in her personal life, left, right, center. But the way that her chronic illness and her chronic pain gets shaped and sh- and formed and twisted into something so grotesque through magical realism and we kind of see her delusion and her reality and the way that those things become intersected in as fact or fiction because of how bizarre things get it just goes further and further off the rails throughout the entire novel i love this book so much everyone i've ever recommended this book to has also very thoroughly enjoyed it and i think that this is one of the most interesting compelling and complex representations of being a disabled woman that i've ever read so yeah please pick that up if you like a bit of weird literary magical realism and finally i want to talk about a historical mystery novel series called fortune favors the dead by stephen spotswood this book i think features some disability representation that's really crucial to the narrative of the story because we're following this mystery through the perspective of willow jean parker pictured here and she is the assistant to the detective Lillian here, this hot MILF, right? And Lillian needs an assistant because she uses a cane and she is disabled and chronically ill. And in order for her to solve her cases with her brilliant mind, she also needs, you know, someone to help her out, do do the things that she can't or that she gets too tired to do. And it's a really great, fun, historical, gritty 1940s New York City mystery that's also very queer and sapphic and deals with like queer history in a very interesting way while still being a compelling mystery that feels supernatural but like it's one of those things that's it's very scooby-doo-esque like oh someone's getting scared but then you pull off the mask and it's like you know it's it's something like that and it also involves this like psychic woman and it's a very fun historical mystery and i really thoroughly enjoyed it and i think that the representation of our detectives chronic illness and disability is really crucial to the course of this story and its sequel and how willow jean has to navigate going about her job and assisting her boss and it's it's written in this like quirky tone of voice as well as like really fun and yeah i really enjoyed this and i think that the disability representation in the side main character is very crucial to the whole setup of the story because if she wasn't disabled and if she wasn't a cane user she would never have had to hire willow jane parker in the first place and yeah it's it's a great novel i think um and yeah those are my recommendations for you i guess i'm sorry i only have the two physical books um here with me as opposed to any more but those are my disability pride month book recommendations and if you have any please let me know in the comments below. And if you think any of these books are not great depictions of disability or chronic illness, please let me know in the comments as well because I'm very open to hearing your thoughts on that because my judgment of what is good representation or what has resonated with me throughout the books that I've read might not have stuck with you in the same way. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, All my social medias are always linked down below. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video, hopefully. Bye.